My name is Sergey Kozlov, Sergey Kozlov, or Sergey Kozlov, whatever is easier for you to pronounce. Also uh, known as a Nomad Coder, and I'm a freelance uh, Rails developer for the past four years, and I like changing places, hence the nickname. So for the past three years, I lived in um, about eight countries, and by living, I mean spending there like from a month to a year. Um, right, and um, today um, I'll tell you about Netsky and what you can do with that. So there was a little discussion if I have to call Netsky a framework or not. Uh, I call it a framework because it does a lot of low-level stuff for you and you can build upon of that. Uh, but uh, to avoid the discussion, let's um, Let's just say it's all about ext.js and Rails. ext.js used on the front end and Rails used on the back end, right? But not only this, it's all about ext.js and Rails components, again. So um, Nick Sutter yesterday uh, did a good job about explaining what the benefits of a component is. So I'm not going into the details about this but um, I'll show you rather what, how you can use it practically and how you can build an application with this. So there is a lot of stuff, cool stuff I want to tell you today. So um, let's first quickly remind you what ext is. All right, not too much to see here. Basically the image is like a bunch of different um, JavaScript components in your browser, uh, different themes, different things to do. Uh, it's a framework, JavaScript uh, framework, which allows you to uh, create very complex um, uh, visual components that allow you to build an application which looks a little bit like a desktop. So it has windows, um, trees, menus, uh, grids, uh, charts, and it's themable and it's, in fact, it's just awesome. But you may need to buy a license for it. That's uh, on a minus side of it. Um, I'm not going into details here, but my opinion it's not too expensive and the things you can do with this, you may have heard, well, well that's the, the most popular uh, blog post on my, um, on my blog. Uh, it's about what you can build with uh, Netskin seven minutes in application, literally seven minutes takes you to, to do this. Can, can you really understand what's on the screen? Um, what, how can I help that? <laughs> Maybe no way, right? Um, all right, so uh, it's basically, what should I press, right. So it's a um, simple application which allows you to uh, track your tasks and it's basically a grid which allows you sorting, pagination, multi-line editing and a lot of that stuff. Um, some snapshots here, but I'm sorry it's so messy. I'm not sure how it goes further because I have to demo you something like this for a big part of the presentation. I just hope I'm not too fucked up. Um, so, all right, but um, people were quite impressed that you can do something like this so quickly. And, um, well, yeah, I see very important stuff is not fitting on the screen, so bad. Anyway, so, uh, they were asking themselves, all right, if I can do this in seven minutes, what can I do in an hour? And this is where the talk is all about. And um, uh, yeah, last time I talked about Netsky in um, Amsterdam on Ruby and Rails conference, I started with rather theoretical stuff about how a component works. And uh, it took like the bigger part of the presentation and people were like, hmm. How can you use it? And then in the end, I showed the demo and people kind of woke up like, wow, so how are you doing this? And I decided, well, okay, maybe better I do this the other way around. So I start today with the demo. And um, I created a uh, an application especially for, for today's talk. Uh, I call it yet another Netsky issue tracker. It's deployed to Heroku right now, so for your pleasure to um, try to break it play with it. And basically it uses a very simple um, 
database scheme. It's about an issue that belongs to a user and belongs to a project, right? It's all about these three simple models. And uh, let's see how it looks um, on the screen. Um, and you can go to the, well, I, I already will show you that this uh, grid is sortable out of the box. It um, has pagination. It, you can search on um, anything, right? You can, um, you can do even some advanced search with the button, which is somewhere outside of the screen. Um, it allows you to open multiple tabs. I need the second hand. Right, so you can see the list of the users in the system. And um, you can do even multiple, um, uh, multi-line uh, editing in this grid, right? And you say apply. Uh, it has validations. It disappeared because I think it wasn't sorted on something. So let's sort it on email first. Okay, you can do even uh, multi-record uh, editing in the in a grid. Hopefully, no, not because the button is not fitting on the screen. <laughs> Um, all right, so these are the grids. All right, but there is more. So let's go, for example, to, um, to a view which shows you issues per project. So basically, you can select a project, and you see the issues from this uh, scoped out to this project. And you can do the same for, for the user. And then there is something which is uh, called um, a project inspector. So if you follow that little icon on the right, you can get um, quite some information about the, um, the project, right? Like uh, a little bit of the statistic on the top. Uh, people involved into the project, again, you can see which issues they are working on, assigned to, and then below you see um, all the issues for this project. So just take a moment to think a little bit what would your personal approach be of creating such an application using Rails, right? It's all Ajax, all the grids, they share um, such a functionality as sorting, uh, search, uh, etc. cetera. Um, and well, um, I'm gonna show you how little code and time that will take to create such an application. First of all, let's start uh, um, with a little bit of introduction into the Natsuki um, gems themselves. So in this application, I'm using three gems. The main one is uh, called Netsky Core. And it's basically the framework itself. It does all the heavy stuff about dynamically loading the components, uh, client-server communication between, between the uh, JavaScript and Ruby and the other way around. Um, component inheritance, right, composability, everything is just in there for you to build your own components, right? And the components that you've seen in action, they are, part of them are in the Netsky base pack, such as grids and forms, and part of them, they are in community pack. I consider this like more or less like a stage um, for staging for, for base pack components that will appear later in base pack. But the idea is that these are the community um, um, written components, right? Here's the um, more or less all the code that you have in the application to start with. And um, you see that I've got some um, naming conventions here. So for example, a grid that displays issues, I call it issue grid. And then you've got user grid as well and project grid. And then there is a uh, forms for uh, editing uh, issues, for example. I didn't show them in action, but maybe I will later, or on the screenshots. And um, then there is something I call explorers, which allow you to browse through some specific uh, stuff, and then um, like some specific records, and then the inspector, which allows you to inspect a given uh, record, right? Anyway, this is the the most complex view that I showed you today. And uh, let's split this into components so that you easier understand 
what you can do, how you can combine components into an application. So these two are issue grids, right? So you reuse uh, a grid that you created and you put them into multiple places in the application without doing much extra coding, right? So this would be the uh, user grid configured for displaying the user model. Um, this is the um, user issue explorer, which allows you to uh, see what issues are assigned to a specific user. Uh, and also, of course, edit those issues and create issues specifically for the selected user. This will be the even more complex component, which is called Project Inspector, which basically includes three things here. Uh, a little statistic on the top, then user issue explorer in the middle, and then just uh, a issue grid uh, on the bottom, right? So, and this together is just another component. So that's the principle of composability of components, right? And if we go even further, then there is a workspace, which it's a component from uh, community back, which allows you dynamically load um, other components and put them into tabs, right? Um, there is a simple component called Navigator, which basically just uh, commands the workspace to load specific components dependent on which um, menu item you clicked. And finally, there is an application component, which in this case just occupies the whole screen and uh, combines the navigator and the workspace together, right? As simple as that. And now we get to, uh, to the code of the components. All right. It seems a lot, but that's literally all that there is, right? And you can ignore this part. You can just throw it away if you just want to create a grid which displays users. All you have to provide is a model name, right? Sorry, it's about issues, not users. And you see that it's inherited from basepack grid panel. And here we see another powerful feature of using component approach. You can do, you can extend components. So grid panel provides you all the functionality you need for sorting and pagination, etc including editing in a form or multi-record uh, editing. And we inherit from it and we just say, okay, just uh, use it with uh, the issue um, model. And the grid itself knows about the uh, column types. It knows which editors to use from EXT for a specific column, etc. So that would be the defaults. So the grid would figure out what are the defaults for the columns. But of course, we can override those columns just as simple as this. We can say, all right, maybe we uh, don't want the created add column at all, so we mark it as hidden. Or maybe we want some specific uh, editor uh, for, for the status grid, so it just shows a nice drop-down box with all the state predefined statuses, right? We can specify the width of these uh, columns, etc. And then below here, um, we just configure the form that is used to edit the um, the records in the form. I didn't show this again, but basically, if you select a record and you click Edit in Form, then you have a nice form which you defined before, and it allows you to edit the record in the form, not just in line. The next one would be uh, for the forms. Again, here below, it's supposed to be a, a snapshot of the form that we created. And this stuff here is more or less one-to-one -one, one -one mapping of um, how you would configure the EXT form to provide this layout here, right? But the most interesting thing here, so to understand this, you would need to look into the EXT uh, documentation, which is, by the way, very nice, very nicely made. But the most interesting things are here. So Netsky form panel takes 
understands that you want to provide just some fields from the model or maybe even uh, virtual uh, fields from the model and to use them in those specific uh, fields on the form. And that's all you have to do to configure the, the form. So you provide the model and you provide uh, the layout of the fields, right? And bind them to the attributes of the model. And it can be as flexible as you can imagine because EXT, again, does all the job here and Netsky just gives you a very easy way to bind specific attributes to specific fields. Let's get to a complex component, which is one to many explorer, right? Which comes from community pack and allows you to have two grids which handle one to many rela related models, right? So on the top you have projects and on the bottom you have issues which are scoped out to uh, a selected project, right? And all the code initially you need for this to work after you inherit from one to many explorer from community pack is specify which model you want on the top and which model you want on the bottom. As simple as that. If they are connected with a one to many like belong to macro or something, then it just works like this. So the grid will figure out all the scoping stuff for you and filtering stuff for you. Um, and additionally, of course, you can configure uh, some details about how you want those grids to look on the screen, right? Maybe you don't want it on the north, on the top uh, area, but you want it on the west, so it will be on the left side, right? So it's very configurable. And again, you can, you can configure the grid below just like that. You, you can override the columns again. For example, in this specific case, because we already know which project is selected, we do not need to show the information about project name in the lower grid, right? So I just say, okay, exclude this column for now. Are you following me more or less? Okay, great. But you will, you will ask, all right, so you inherit from some complex, sophisticated component and everything looks clean and nice, so, but what about building those components? How hard would that be, right? And here is an example of the component which inherits just from Netsky base, which is the lowest uh, you can inherit from. And um, it basically, it's, it's an example, we do this on the example of the application component, right, the, the top level component. And all we do, we just have to specify, all right, from which EXT component we want our uh, component to inherit from, right? And then we specify, all right, which items we want on this component to be shown, right? Uh, which other components should be inside of it. And basically we just say, okay, we define two components here, the navigator on the left and the workspace on the right with some configuration, which I'm not gonna in too much gonna do uh, too much details here. And then we specify the layout, layout of those components in the um, application components. We just say, okay, use the navigator and the workspace and that's it. You just put them together and they just work. Um, and finally, um, here's a little um, code snippet which shows you how to put this uh, application component into a Rails view. It's as simple as that, specifying the Netsky and then the name of the uh, component, application component. That's all you need to put a component into the Rails view. All right, and um, by the way, the Project Explorer, which has a more sophisticated layout, uh, works in a similar way. So these are kind of internals for, for those who build their own components um, on a lower level, right? All right, so you may think, okay, how to test this all, right? Because it seems all like very complex, a lot of components inside of components, inside of components. Does it really, is it really easy to test with all the job Ajax uh, requests and stuff should be like something too sophisticated maybe. But in fact, there is a way to, uh, there is basically a possibility to load each of those components that you, that you created separately in a separate, um, for example, tab or window, right? And test it separately. So here is the one, we just specify in the URL, we specify the component class name and it just loads separately, not in the 
context of an application or anything else. This way you can isolate the component, uh, debug it, fine tune it, you find you, you, you are satisfied with how it looks and then you just see how it looks exactly the same in the scope of your application, right? And besides of that, you can use Cucumber to test your components. This particular application I created, it's not tested, but um, here's an extract from, from the uh, base spec tests that uh, just an example of the test that tests uh, the grid component. And you see that it's pretty straightforward. You can understand what it's actually doing, right? So base spec components, they're quite well tested. Um, <laughs> what happened there, Nick? I missed something funny, I'm sure. All right, so basically, I'm almost at the end of this talk. Maybe it was very quick, quicker than I expected in any case. But uh, let's talk about some um, to do. So there is a lot of things that have to be, has to be done in Netsky. And first of all is documentation, but as you heard yesterday from Sven, that if you, if you are a designer, you're very welcome to uh, think about a better logger for Netsky if you want to contribute. And actually I want to, sorry, I do want to ask you please contribute if you find this a nice project or if you use this, this in your projects yourself. Yeah, it's, I think it's good it went so fast because we will have more time for questions and uh, I hope there will be a lot. And I like discussing this uh, starting from the architecture and to the topics of who is using this in production and stuff. So please come to me later after the uh, talk and uh, I'm very happy to answer your questions. Um, and last, uh, the credits. I want to, th uh, to thank uh, uh, Visual Cube uh, Incorporated for sponsoring uh, some components uh, development that you saw today in this uh, demo application. And of course, I uh, Netsky community for patches and help and feedback. Right. Um, so to conclude, I think or I hope you realize that doing the component way um, provides you a well-structured, concise, and highly maintainable code. You know, it's, it's not scaffolding. You do not need to generate code to make this work. It's basically of using something you wrote before. You didn't see a single line of JavaScript in these slides, right? Which basically, it doesn't mean that you do not have to write JavaScript. If you create a custom component, you have to know EXT. But if you're just a Rails developer who says, okay, I'm fine with the components that you provide with the base pack and community pack, you don't have to write JavaScript so much, right? You just configure the components and they just work. So I encourage you to look through the code on GitHub to play with the uh, demo application and um, um, browse through netskip.org. And um, I think that concludes my talk. Thank you very much. Uh, when you uh, call Netsky helper in view, uh, JavaScript in line it in HTML, yeah? Yeah, some of the JavaScript is put in line, right, for this component. Uh, but why not uh, to generate uh, just a JavaScript file and uh, for including in uh, by script tag? Um, it might be possible to do this, but I haven't had, to be honest, enough time to figure out how to do this cleanly. I did a, like a, a, an attempt to do this exactly this way as you explained and there were some problems I couldn't really figure out so I decided, okay, I'll leave it like this for now. But if you have a good idea how to implement it, you know, you're very welcome. Okay, with the patch. We, we can discuss this later. Okay. Excuse me? We can discuss it later. Sure, great. I have one more question. Uh, one level uh, relation between one to many uh, associations. Uh, how it will work in case of uh, more deep uh, relations? If uh, uh, you have uh, one uh, 
common object, uh, several ch ch children objects, and if each child object have I its own uh, one-to-many relations, how it will work? Do you mean that if you have like multiple uh, associations, like chain associations, how do you realize this in this case? Yes. Um, I think it depends on your requirements, really. So either you can use maybe multiple of those one-to-many um, explorers, or you can create your own. It depends on how you want to display those, right? So the one-to-many explorer that I showed before, it serves for a specific um, solution, right? Where you have two grids, but there might be different solutions of how to, how to implement this, right? Like maybe you want the collector, um, collection uh, component grid to pop up in a window or something. So it really depends more or less on your requirements, right? So it will not be so easy as you shown us. Um, it will not be, it will not be easy be because you will probably have to come up with your own component for this, but that's where Netsky, will, Netsky Core will help you, right? But of course you cannot just cover all the cases with one component. It says for a specific belongs to or has many association, right? Between two two models. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, can you show some example how to test components, how to write functional tests or unit tests? So you want to, maybe you want to see this, the steps implementation for this um, uh, cucumber steps that I showed before. Let's come here. So this is an example, right? I'm not sure if you saw that. Uh, okay, okay, so something for you. Well, it reads pretty straightforward, I would say, and um, all the base spec is covered with this kind of tests. They are pretty easy to read. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much.